Good afternoon, Facebook, YouTube, Daily Motion, and Twitter. This is Rich again, back for your second video blog of the day for Thursday, March 12, 2015, at, at 4.40 p.m. in Bellica, Massachusetts. Sunny out, but cold. It's only about 30. Nine degrees, but we got some snow melted today. Some news to report: The Boston Red Sox beat the Pittsburgh Pirates in spring training action by the score of five to one today. Demarcus Murray has signed a contract for the Philadelphia Eagles, five years, forty-two million dollars, and the New York Islanders signed Johnny Boychuk to a seven-year contract extension worth forty-two million dollars. So, congratulations to him. And my next subject of the day is about the Undertaker versus Mankind feud in the WWE that ran from 1996 through 1998. Mankind is Mick Foley slash Cactus Jack slash Dude Love and Mankind made his debut in the WWE on April 1st, 1996 on Monday Night Raw. He made his debut, wrestled in a, in a match. It was a squash match and later on in the night when The Undertaker was wrestling Justin Hawk Bradshaw in the main event on Monday Night Raw, the uh, Mankind interfered and he attacked um, The Undertaker, beating him up and stuff, putting the Mandible Claw, which is a submission move where Mankind put like his middle two th fingers down somebody's throat with a special tape and stuff. And this kicked off the Undertaker versus Mankind feud, which lasted a long time in the WWE. And f for, the, for the next couple of months, Mankind was interfering in the Undertaker's matches and stuff. Mankind cost the Undertaker the Intercontinental, Intercontinental title at In Your House Beware of Dog 2 against Goldust in a casket match. The casket match, the Undertaker's specialty match. And and Mankind and the Undertaker faced off at King of the Ring in 1996. Mankind beat the Undertaker when the Undertaker's manager, Paul Bella, accidentally hit the Undertaker with, his, with the urn, which was meant for Mankind, and this continued the feud with the Undertaker and Mankind through SummerSlam 1996, and it was, and it was a broil... Boiler Room Brawl. Actually, the Boiler bro, Boiler Room Brawl was taped at the at the Quickie Loans Arena in Cleveland the night before SummerSlam, and they fought in the bro, Boiler Room of the Quickie Loans Arena in Cleveland, and it was a very brutal match and match through the Boiler Room. There were rumors that The Undertaker was suffering from a serious staff infection to his arm, and there was a rumor he he it was so severe, the staff infection, that it could have amputated his arm. And also I heard another rumor around this time that The Undertaker was on the verge of leaving the WWE and going to WCW, so this could have been The Undertaker's farewell match to WWE. The bo Boiler Room Brawl was one of the most vicious and violent matches in WWE history. And then when they got the signal to come down to the to to fight in the in the arena and it continued on and stuff, Paul Bella was the Undertaker's manager, was pacing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the match was to win the match, the wrestler had to get grabbed the possession of the urn that Paul Bella had. And Paul Bella was still nervous, very nervous. And then when The Undertaker came and he beat up, up Mankind and stuff, he tried to grab the urn to get the possession of the urn, but the, but Paul Bella was, was holding back and stuff like that. I don't know why, but soon The Undertaker, Soon Mankind was attacking The Undertaker, beating him up and stuff like that. And then Paul Bella was laughing and stuff. And then Paul Bella slapped The Undertaker. Paul Bella turned on The Undertaker to side with Mankind. And, and The Undertaker says, say it ain't so. He was um, begging for Paul Bella's forgiveness. And then Paul Bella um, hits The Undertaker with the urn, knocks him out cold, and gives... 
position of the year into Mankind. Mankind wins the match, and Mankind now has Paul Bell as his manager. The announcers, Jim Ross and Vince McMahon, were saying Paul Bell had broke an unbreakable bond with The Undertaker six years. And it was an unbreakable bond, but it was broken. Which, which I never, that was a very, one of the most shocking things I've seen in WWE history up to that point. Paul Bell turning on The Undertaker because I never thought I would see the day. And then this feud continues on through, through like the fall months. Um, they had at like Mind Games 1996 in your house when Shawn Michaels faced off against Mankind for the WWE title. They were, um, uh, Mankind was going to put Shawn Michaels in a casket, but The Undertaker pops up and then scares Mankind away and stuff. And then at, in your house, Buried Alive, they was going to have a, like a Buried Alive, a live match between The Undertaker and Ma Mankind, which the promos leading to this um, Buried Alive match was pretty good and stuff like that. And it happened on October 1996. At Indianapolis, it was a great um, match between The Undertaker and Mankind, a brawl, brawl, they always have brawls and stuff, and The Undertaker beats um, Mankind, puts him in uh, the big hole they had that they dug up, but then a masked wrestler comes in and attacks The Undertaker. The masked wrestler was The Executioner, The Executioner was played by Terry Gordy, and then the then several wrestlers come in and they bury the Undertaker alive, including Mankind and the Executioner and Triple H and Justin Hawk Bradshaw and a couple of others. And then the Undertaker's buried alive, but then he has his glove that comes up and stuff like that. And then the Mankind Undertaker feud continues at Survivor's 1996, and the Undertaker got kind of a makeover during this match for his costume. Originally, the Undertaker was dressed like in black and stuff, looked more like a creepy, creepy and stuff like that because he had his gl gloves and stuff, and he also had everything like his boots and stuff were like like an Undertaker, but he kind of, like, Undertaker reappeared, and he had kind of more of a goth-styled look and stuff. He kind of, his makeup was different and stuff, and his hair was a little bit in a ponytail, and he wrestled Mankind in an old hold spot match at Survivor Series 1996. Undertaker beats Mankind with the Tombstone, but then the Executioner attacks the Undertaker, and then they have a few the Undertaker and the Executioner. And then the Mankind Undertaker a few kind of simmers down for a while into WrestleMania, the night after WrestleMania 13, when the Undertaker wins the WWE title. They have an interview on Raw with Vince McMahon and the Undertaker. The, the Undertaker, like, ex-manager Paul Bella comes out and w wants to reunite with The Undertaker and stuff. And when the interview was, they were about, when The Undertaker was about to answer the question, the, they had it, they ran out of time. So on the next week on Raw, like, The Undertaker has an interview segment and Paul Bella, and they were teasing about Paul Bella and The Undertaker reuniting. And then they re kind of reunite, but then Mankind comes up and throws a fireball in The Undertaker's face. You didn't see too much fireballs in WWE at this point. You didn't see, maybe that was only maybe the second time on WWE television there was a fire, some wrestler threw a fireball at another wrestler. That, that, the first one was when Sh Sergeant Slaughter did it to Hulk Hogan after WrestleMania 7, and they set the match for In, in Your House Revenge of the Taker. Um, the Undertaker vs. Mankind for the WWE title it was a great match between The Undertaker and Mankind. Another brawl. Undertaker beats Mankind to the, retain the WWE title. And then The Undertaker throws fire at Paul Bella, burning him. And this, this feud kind of continued the next night on Raw when he, 
and during a match between The Undertaker and Triple H, Mankind came with a blowtorch and he attacked The Undertaker and he was going to try to blow towards the Undertaker alive, but it didn't ha it didn't happen. I think that the blow to torch was not going to be sting wasn't going to explode and stuff. It was probably gimmick and stuff. And then for the next year, the Undertaker Mankind feel kind of simmered down because um, Mankind became Dude Love and Cactus Jack and the Undertaker went on to other things. But in June of 1998, the feud returned when um, Mankind reappeared in the WWE and he attacked The Undertaker during a match between the, between the Undertaker and Kane for the number one contendership for the WWE title on Raw and then Mankind rejoins Paul Bella and now Kane and the match between The Undertaker and Mankind was set for King of the Ring 1998 in a Hell in a Cell match. And this Hell in a Cell match was one of the most famous cage matches of all time. So many crazy bumps by Mankind. Mankind got thrown th over the top rope on a, onto the Spanish announce table. Jim Ross says, oh, oh God, would somebody stop the, ma the head match, please? Enough, enough, enough's enough. And then Jerry the King Lawless says, oh, they killed him and stuff like that. The the bumps were for Mick, Mankind McFoley were insane. And this was the most memorable cage match of all time, even though the in-ring performance was not a classic, but the, the but the the bumps and the the things with Man, uh, Mankind probably made it the most famous um, cage match slash Hell in the Cell match of all time. The Undertaker beats Mankind in that Hell in the Cell match and basically that put, puts like an end to their feud and they kind of continue their feud briefly in tag team matches but this was the last significant match they had one on one on, t on pay per view at the uh, King of the Ring 1998. Mankind versus Undertaker feud probably is one of the top 10 feuds of all time. It in the WWE. This was Mick Foley's first major feud in the WWE, and a, a lot of twists and turns during this feud with Paul Bearer turning on the Undertaker. This this was a classic feud, and uh, it was the probably the Undertaker's most memorable feud besides Kane, but. This feud went too long and stuff. It should have it should have ended at Survivor Series 1996, but it just dragged on and dragged on for a few for over close to two and a half years. Okay, I'll be back for the third and final video blog of the night, which will be about personality profile tonight, Grant Hill, and coming in a few days, my WrestleMania reviews, beginning with WrestleMania one and. Tomorrow could be surprises, and the Great Ones video blog is coming in April. It could either be The Rock, or Wayne Gretzky, or Heidi Pratt, or Julie Bratton. Have a good day, everybody. See you tonight.